What it do, what it is, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I am your host, Day Day, and today we spent the bin on y'all. We got Mark Bravo in the building for the second time. What up, bro? Y'all already know. It's Mark Bravo, Eastside Wavy, the young OG, little saint, creative house. We in here, man. The wavy one. But I brought him back because we have officially concluded season one of Creative House DMV. Now, for that, I want to give a round of applause. We kind of got a little off live audience, but let's just snap the fingers. We ain't trying to fuck up the mic so we look at this. Hey, shout out to you for that. But um, yeah, congrats. Now we can kind of speak on it a little bit more exactly now that right. we done picked a winner and all that. That's but right. overall, you know what I'm saying? Now that it's finished and you get to kick back and see everything unfold, how was that? It feels good. Mm-hmm. I have ADHD. Mm-hmm. So, you know, handling so many things at once, it was a challenge. And I'm glad I saw it to the end and we executed it. And that's what I call success when you reach your goal. Mm-hmm. And not only you call it success, but the viewers, the viewers pardon me, because as of this moment, officially 10,000 views yes, have sir. come across Creative House DMV. That's another round of snaps I have here. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. So you got 10,000 views. What was your favorite part from it overall? Ooh. My favorite part was realizing what I'm doing and the final moment of preparation before dropping episode one. Mm -hmm. That was for me. That was the best thing because now it's been a year. So for me to go back and look at every single thing we did and just now see it's time to finally bring it out. And I have all the pictures. I have all the ducks lined up. So that momentum of right before you start, I like that because you never get that moment back. Right, right. Um, and, and again, we talked about in the last episode, and if you didn't check that out, make sure that you do. It's on YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and put the video above when he completely broke down where Creative House DMV came from, uh, how the process was as far as picking everybody in the whole nine. Mm-hmm. Um, but what you're doing really is a great thing. Um, and again, there's a lot that we covered on it. And I mean... I, I praise you a ton in that video. I'm going to continue to do it now because you really put a lot of people on in that video and you really saw the camaraderie of everyone who didn't know one another came from all parts of the country, came together underneath one roof and made content together. So for that, I've got to congratulate you and crown you as the Diddy of the DMV. Thank you. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's crazy. The Diddy of the Diddy DMV. Of the DMV. I appreciate that. Of course. And I want to say another favorite moment. So we were on tour as we were dropping the episodes. Mm -hmm. We went to New York City and sold out a subway station. We had, and we didn't sell tickets to this. This is like people throughout their day stopping. We have a crowd of like 30 to 50 people just watching us perform. Mm -hmm. And we met a drummer. We met someone playing the sax. And we had a whole production. And And y'all all came together. Yes. Damn. Yeah, I saw the video. You was on the skates and everything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a performer for your ass, man. I'm not playing. <laughs> Thank you, man. Gotta entertain. That's the whole thing. Of course. What other stops did y'all make besides in New York City? We went to Philly. We went to Tampa. Shout out to Empower. We went to Orlando. I opened up for Rock Nation at, um, and Kayla for real, for real. Mm. That was dope. And it was cool having Creative House there support me. Uh, where we went to, we went to... DC, of course, and then you know we ended it in Maryland at pool party. Mm. What's to come in the future with Creative House DMV? So we will be having a lot of really dope one-off events, and um, you know as we're preparing for season two, and we also have added new members to Creative House and some partners and some sponsors to Creative House because I did a lot of the things on my own. And I've learned through that process that I need to learn how to, uh, not only how to outsource, but to navigate the outsource effectively. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to now have new members and have partners and um, be able to work and give people the actual vision that I want to see to a bigger level. That's what it is, man. And we're going to see it full through. Can't wait for it. In the meantime, we're going to interview a few present and future Creative House DMV members. Shout out to Mark Bravo again. And go ahead and check out that last episode on YouTube, tagged above, when he breaks down the whole ordeal. Shout out to you, Mark. Diddy of DMV. I appreciate you, buddy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
Yes, sir. So joining us live is one of the runner ups for Creative House DMV. I am joined by Empower, a.k.a. Emmy. What it do? A.k.a. your favorite hoe. H-E-A-U-X. Say it with your chest. Mm, our favorite hoe. Yes. So let's go ahead and break down your favorite hoe, where it came from and what it represents. OK, boom. So a story. Mm -hmm. I was wearing a black bra with a blazer top and like some, I think I was wearing some like a black bottom, tights, heels. I'm out at the, the event. It's hot as hell. And I'm in the thing sweating. And I go up to my friend Hayes. Shout out Hayes. And I'm like, it's so hot in here. And he just goes, ploop, hoe it up. So I just took my, my thing off and I hoed it up. And then after that, I was just like, okay, that's going to be the slogan. Hoe it up. And I spelled it H-O-E. But then I was like, that's so boo. Tomato, tomato. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, all right, how else do you spell hoe? And then I found, you know, hoe, like the French way. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay, boom. Hoe it up. Your favorite hoe. And I've been everyone's favorite hoe for about two years now. Mm. So it's cool. And it just means be yourself and be confident. Do whatever the hell you want to do because they're going to call you a hoe anyways. I could literally be your favorite hoe in one of like a a job. Uh, I can still be a hoe. It's just about how I feel. It's me. Your favorite hoe. Boom. So you took the... Negative perception around that word and turned it around into something that you turned into confidence, if you would, mm -hmm. and say, fuck y'all, because you're going to say I'm mm -hmm. a hoe regardless, but I'm going to say I'm one, but in a different spell and in a different meaning behind it. Exactly. And you know, um, if they want to take it and they want to run with it as like, oh, I like to pop pussy. Yes, I do. But just not on you. That's why you're mad. So there we go. That's actually good marketing. <laughs> Were you a marketing major? Um, I am a communications major, mass communications. Okay. I just graduated with my associates. All right. That's 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 not way. yeah, yeah, we can do the snaps for that. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. That's um that's not far from the marketing mm -hmm. uh area. Some like to say I'm a marketing genius, but yeah. I don't do all that. That reminds me of like um how black people took nigger from nigger. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because they tried to use it in a bashful way against us. Mm -hmm. And we said, you know what? We're going to take it, use it amongst us. You know what I'm saying? As a, you know, I guess you could say like a grateful, just non-threatening way, if you yes. would. Right? And only we can say it. Yes. Now, y'all can say it. Y'all can still try to say it if you want. Anybody, and... go ahead. Call me a hoe. I'm going to say yo. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is exactly what I'm going to say. Um, I also like to say, um, I had a thought. Oh, all my fans and my supporters, they are my hoes, spelled just like this. I'm just the favorite. So, you know, it's so everyone is understood. If you don't like that, then you can be a Powerpuff shawty. But that means you're pussying out. So it's a fine line, just to let y'all know. Don't be a pussy, eat pussy. Exactly. Mm. So be a hoe. Yes. Don't be a powder puff girl. So if you're a fan of <laughs> if you're a fan of Emmy, be a hoe. Mm -hmm. Live your truth. Dude, Don't be a pussy. Eat pussy. Did it's, you like that? Yes. Um, I will be taking that and running with it. I'll that's give you cool. a ten percent. Don't worry. Yeah, I was ready okay. to say it's, it's patent. I yes, patented. it's, it's okay. okay. I didn't. It was off the top of the head. <laughs> um, I like your style. You're fearless. Mm -hmm. I like to say that the the hoe music doesn't even have to be about shaking ass. I like to make not make, empower people to cry. You can be a hoe and cry. You can feel love and be a hoe. You can be mad and be a hoe. Um, people hear my one song, This Ain't the 2000s, and think all my music is going to be about why you trying to fuck. I only want some head. But I have other stuff too. Mm -hmm. I have um, Why Do You Stay On My Mind When You Can Never Treat Me Right. That's another one. Mm -hmm. um, I got um, licking the top as I get to the bottom. Loving bad bitches? No, it's not a problem. Mm. She said she loved Drake, and I told her that's fine. She be the six, and I'll be the nine. Mm. Just like, you know, we got variations here. <laughs> she said licking from the top to the bottom, from the rooter to the tutor. Mm -hmm. So when you, um, so which one contracts more, attracts more people when you're talking about straight sex or if you're talking about feelings and emotions dealing with someone else? Well, if you're a hoe... A fan of mine, both of them attract you. 
But if I'm like attracting people, I guess, like this new fans, mm-hmm. the new fans come for the sex, but they stay for the feelings. They mm. they they listen to this ain't the two thousands and then they go and listen to Blue Valentine and they're like, Oh, that's cute. Mm-hmm. I like that. What else you got? And then before you know it, they're hoes. They're my favorite hoe. So you reel them in with the sex and then keep them around with the expression of your emotions and whatnot. Yeah, because like I don't want to be one dimensional. That sucks. Damn. Like you don't want me. You don't like. At, at some point, you have to change it up. That's why every artist, even the big mainstream ones, do new stuff. You know, they 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 realize that as much as you have your core fan base that wants to hear you talking about sex or drugs or guns or or pussy popping, they're going to be a moment yes. where they're going to realize and say, "I don't even know you as an artist." You know, mm. I don't know you. You, <laughs> like I know. That's when you give them them. Yeah, but like my that. my game plan is to give them me all the time, every single day. Even in the sex one. Even in the sex one, because you don't know what type of positions I like. That's why you said sixty nine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't really like that. You don't? Mm-mm, I don't like sixty nine. But you just said you're you. I know. I mean. What's so you mean? said sixty nine in the lyrics. No, but you no, don't no. You like be it. the six and I'll be the nine. Okay, okay. It's I got a you. it's a pun. Yeah. It makes me laugh. Got you. But it doesn't mean I like sixty nine, especially with men. Oh no, they don't. It's too much. Yeah. It's just too much. Why don't you like it? I've never heard of a woman saying that they like it. Every woman I ask that they don't like it. What part that y'all don't like about it? I think a lot of women do like sixty nine. It's very fun, but it's. I think it's just more about what does what is the man got going on? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's they ups- want you to just... It's upside down head for y'all not different? <laughs> it's a little different. At least for me, I like women more than I like men when if giving oral. So for men... I'm talking about receiving. Oh, receiving? Because for us, definitely upside women. down is bananas. De- definitely women. But okay. um, upside down is fun. It's, the thing I don't like about it is just like, if I'm on top doing the 69, it just more seems like... Okay, I have to keep working. I'd like to just lay back, enjoy, and maybe you work, and then I, <laughs> and I'll have like, okay, cool. I'll I understand like, that, but <laughs> I hope you're not the bottom of a '69 with a man out here, because that is vicious. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> have you been the bottom of a '69 with a man? It's fun. Okay. Hey, Emmy. Makes me feel like I'm suffocating. Your favorite hoe. She is here, live in the flesh. Yes. So, in the season finale of Creative House DMV, Mark and the judges labeled you as the most potential to be an internet star. And I think from the six minutes of you being here alone, that, you know, kind of speaks on its own. And like I said, if I had to pick one word to describe you, I would say, I said fearless before, mm. yes, I would say vibrant. And I'm pretty sure they caught the same vibes. That's why they said most likely to be an internet star. There you go. See, just the animation, the character, you have it. Right, but mine is Robert. If you had to pick one word to describe your style, what would it be and why? Oh, but also hoochie. I like hoochie. I love hoochie. Ain't nothing but a hoochie mama. Hood rat, hood rat, hoochie mama. Um, like ho esque. Let's do. Let's use that as a word. Ho esque. <laughs> I think that. Empowering yourself has to do with more than just your style. It has to do with your mindset and your lifestyle because a lot of the times we we use dress, or the way we dress and makeup and stuff as a cover because we're not really, um, we're not feeling it. Mm-hmm. We're just trying, which is good, but you have to make sure that everything you're doing is actually working because you might need to do something else. You might need, maybe you need to dress a different way or maybe you need to just do your eyebrows because you, you don't need lashes or maybe you need to do a different hair color. Maybe you need to shave your head. There's so many, you know, and you, you think putting braids in is going to make you feel good, but maybe it's actually being skin bald. Who knows? It's all about you finding out what's good for you and applying it. Don't just do it. Be it. And that's how I feel. How did you come across this realization? Did it come from experience or were you just born with it? I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm a 
I'm not going to say I am, but I was a very insecure woman. Mm -hmm. I still have insecurities, but um, just having the right people around me and praying and um, writing music has been very helpful to know that like I am a work in progress and I am not perfect. I'm just your favorite hoe. And that should be good enough of itself. <laughs> That's it. Was that one of your hoes calling? N um, no, it's Honey. Hey, Honey. <laughs> my um, DJ, my um, my lifeline. Got you. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about some of the musical inspirations. Uh, okay. Did you listen to Trin? So where are you originally from? Let the people know where you're really from. I am from... Okay, I was born in New York. Okay. I was born in New York. Uh -huh. My mom moved me out of there, mm -hmm. and we went to Florida. Mm -hmm. So I spent um, from like t t ten years old to twenty two in Florida because I went back and forth for the first ten years of my life from New York and Florida. Um, so like inspiration wise, I like my mom didn't let me listen to music. Music we listened to dance hall reggae. And Keisha Cole and Jennifer Hudson mm. and Mary J. Blige. So I didn't know a lot of stuff until like I turned 17. I met a boy and he was like, That's all you listen to? Here's a plethora of music you should listen to. Welcome and to the, the dark side. Yeah, that yeah. type of stuff. Mm -hmm. so. so being from Florida, I mean, did you did you like Trina after you got introduced to the other side of the music? Um, no. I, I'm not going to say that I didn't like her. I just didn't listen. That just wasn't Yeah, I just didn't listen. Like, yeah. my first introduction to, like, Miami music was, uh, like, the City Girls, which is bad mm. because, like, they're a, the evolution of Miami and not, like, Miami, Miami. Where but, it started. Yeah. And, you know, shout out Florida, but I just like what I like. Mm -hmm. And I don't like trying new things unless someone's, like, forces it and then I'm like all right cool <laughs> so so do you like city girls because I see some similarities in in your style and your confidence along with theirs mm -hmm. I like the city girls they make me want to twerk and have a good time and I love Carisha and JT shout out to Carisha and JT yes so if you could pick anyone mm -hmm. to collab with on a song I'm gonna I'm gonna go deeper and find out Music wise, what Emmy what Emmy is. If you could pick anyone to collab with on a song, who would it be? One mm, person. Just one. Just one. And I'll let you have fun with it. You can pick someone else to be in a music video. Don't even have to. Okay, so uh, the song will be with Vibes Cartel, mm. and then um, in the music video, I will have Amine to be my love interest, so I can kiss all over him. Mm. With consent, of course. Free vibes. Mm -hmm. Free the boy vibes. <laughs> That's a good one. Mm -hmm. You Jamaican? Yes. Ah, yes. Ross Collage. <laughs> <laughs> they'll get it from him in prison because, you know, he's not getting out, unfortunately. And then the video will be just so great. And he'll just be talking about skin out and, and underneath and all that stuff. It's going to be great. Yeah. And, yeah. It sounds like it would. Yeah. I asked that question because I'm all for speaking things into existence. Mm -hmm. So why not, right? If it was a woman, Jan Jackson. Mm. And if not Jan Jackson, Tanache. Boom. Got you. Okay. <laughs> Jan, it is fire, man. Mm -hmm. I was just watching Poetic Justice like a week ago. Okay. Great fucking movie. Yes. So what makes your music overall different from what's uh, being consumed on a mass level um, out here? I don't know yet, mm -hmm. but I'm hoping that as I continue down my musical journey, I can find out what's different. I just think it's, in, I think I bring something different to the whole movement because I just feel like it's like, I just do, like I'm different. Like my vibe is very different. My presence brings joy. So it's not like hood rat ho. And it's not like um, Janae where it's like, ooh flowers and mm -hmm. crystals it's just like a city bitch trying to hoe it up with her friends mm. and shake ass with about three shots in i feel like that's what i give shots of what gin well everyone else can drink whatever the hell they Let's want say, but yeah, i will be drinking shots of gin Jesus. and juice <laughs> i know that i am an old man but that's what i like to drink 
fucking Bombay memories. This is what you do. You get gin and then you tell them to put every juice that they have in there. Then boom, it tastes the same every single time. Because it's so fucking strong. You got to dilute it. But but whatever your flavor, neighbor. But you did say uh, different. And I I would attest to that. And I would say it's an organic different because especially today, it's all about standing out. So people will force themselves to try to be different. It's very cringe-esque, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So shout out to you for being naturally different. Like I said, um, the vibrant, I I say vibrant because it's a natural vibrance that you give off. That's what I give Mm -hmm. in the, what, hour of knowing you. Mm -hmm. that, That says a lot. I All just right. want people to feel comfortable around me and not like in a weird way, but just mm-hmm. like in the like, when you walk in, you feel comfortable enough to drink because you know I'm not going to do no weird shit or you right. feel comfortable to move like this because you know I'm not going to make fun of you. I'm probably going to do it with you too. Mm-hmm. And then we just there and it's having a good time. And I'm glad that I came out to DMV and met everyone in the creative house. Um And I've made some really close friends from it and um, made music with her. I think I made a song with Dame, one of the contestants, and I think that's it. And oh, and and Mark, the the, the host, he's he's the host. He's not a part of the contestants. But um, yeah, and I'm hoping that as I continue out in the DMV, I make more friends, more connections. And before you know it, I'll be big. Yeah. I'm pretty sure after seeing this, people will try to highlight at you. Um, as far as, not like that, I'm just saying as far as trying to, you know, collab with you or if it is like that, whatever it may be. Um, so with the Creative House DMV, what was your favorite part from it? I think it was just getting away from Tampa. That would be my favorite part. Just being able to say, I left and I did something and they're making that, opening the door. Because once I came and I landed and we walked through the doors and everyone was just like, hey, hey, hey. I was like, oh, people are nice. Okay, cool. And um, if I had to pick, pick, I would say the tour was fun. I enjoyed performing and watching my fellow contestants perform. And the most nervous part was the ending when they were announcing the winner. (laughs) I was like, if I don't win, I'm about to Set this bitch off, <laughs> but I didn't. You know, if you, I, <laughs> if you rewatch the the season finale, and you watch my face. I'm telling you, my face went from like a nervous to a, and then I had to fix my face because I my you could see my face, and I wanted mm. to be supportive. I was like, yeah, well, but I wanted to win so bad. I ain't gonna hold you. You're a competitive spirit. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes. But all in all. Um, you know, me and Mark talked about it on our last uh, interview. How everyone, in a way, was a winner. You know what I mean? Because with the collaborations, with you know, meeting new people that you can make something happen with down the road and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. So, what's to come in the future with Empower, aka Emmy, aka Yours, Mine, Our Favorite Hoe? Oh, I like that. Yours, mine, ours. <laughs> Okay. Um. My 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 what's the word I'm looking for? My dream, my manifestations is I want to be on a festival in the next year. I want to be on a real festival, performing on the big stage, growing my fan base. That's like my long term goal, or is a year long term? I don't know. But um, what's coming up next, I want to do another, um, not another project, no more projects. I'm going to start putting more singles out, heading in a very different um, musical direction, more videos, more photo shoots, more collaborations with brands, growing my TikTok, just being that hoe, period, clamp, shut it down. That's it, and that's all. And as far as you being on the stage for a festival, I mean, shit, I'm I'm a big believer. Everything happens for a reason. It's written. It's all put together for a reason. You're here in the DMV, right down the street in a couple hours. It's going to be something in the water. I think I'm going to bring it back here next year, so why not make that your goal for 365 days from now? Hey, Pharrell, I'm awesome. You should put me on something in the water. I'll perform first. Nobody in the field. At least I did it. That's how I feel. Fucking and dedication. And Afro, Afro, um, Afro, 
Why, why am I forget Afro Fest? I don't know Afro why I was trying to call it Afro Punk. That's not what it's called. Afro Fest. I'd kill that. I'd be like, yeah. I would be killing that shit. <laughs> You're on the way, kid. You're on the way. I can see the millions. Nah, but seriously, I think you should speak that one into it. It's just, it's like I said, right down the street later on today. You spoke on it today. Why not? Yes. There you go. Well, thank you for joining us, Emmy. Mm-hmm. And um, the best of luck on everything coming in the near future. Yes. Follow me everywhere. Empower. E double M P O W E double R. Clamp. Just like that. Yep. <laughs>